In this video, we'll look at the credit creation process. In doing so, we'll consider how banks can earn profit and what is meant by the terms liquidity ratio and the credit multiplier. This will help us eventually understand how an initial deposit eventually leads to a much larger increase in the money supply. Before we get into it, let's take an overview of the credit creation process. In order to have an understanding of this process, you first need to follow the process of how deposits turn into loans at a bank. First, a deposit is made at a commercial bank. If a customer makes a deposit, the bank is liable to that customer for that amount. Therefore, a customer deposit is a liability of the bank. The bank does not hold on to all of the cash in the deposit. It keeps a percentage of the cash deposit as what is called a reserve. The remaining amount can be used by the bank to make loans. Customers use these loans to pay for goods and services such as cars and homes. Firms earn profit from this expenditure and this money eventually finds itself deposited into the banking system again and the process continues. Here's another way to see it. The bank's customers make deposits at the bank. As I mentioned before, the bank will only keep a percentage of these deposits as reserves. It is unlikely that all depositors will ask for all of their money at once, so the bank has some freedom to use that surplus to make loans. That surplus is loaned out to con individual consumers and firms at a higher interest rate than is paid to depositors. This difference is where the bank earns its profits. Even those loans eventually make their way back into the banking system. For example, if you buy a car with a loan, you pay the seller with borrowed money, the seller will then deposit that money at their banking institution and the cycle can repeat. Banks receive deposits or liabilities and pay interest to depositors. They use a percentage of these deposits to make loans, which are assets, that are given at a higher interest rate than the interest paid on deposits. A percentage of the deposits are held at the bank. This is determined by the bank's liquidity ratio. What is the liquidity ratio exactly? Well, it's a percentage of deposits that a commercial bank holds as cash or cash assets. If a bank maintains a 10% liquidity ratio and a new deposit is made of $1,000, they will keep $100 in the form of cash or cash assets. They can use the remaining $900 only to make new loans. Let's follow this through an example of an initial $1,000 deposit. If the liquidity ratio is 10%, then $900 can be used to make new loans. The addition to reserves is $100. The $900 that went out in loans eventually returns to the banking system as a new deposit and then generates a new increase in loans of $810. 10% is kept as reserves at the bank of $90. The third deposit is now $810 and again 90% goes out as loans of $729 and 10% is kept worth $81. The fourth time, the $729 becomes a deposit of which $656.10 is issued in loans and $72.90 is kept in reserves. If we continue this process, we will eventually see a total increase in deposits of $10,000, an increase in loans of $9,000, and an increase in reserves of $1,000. You may have figured out how to use a liquidity ratio to determine how much the increase in the overall amount of loans and reserves will be. We use the liquidity ratio to determine the credit multiplier as such. You divide 100 by the liquidity ratio and it will give you the value of the credit multiplier. Let's look at a work problem to help us understand better. Assume the liquidity ratio is 20%. The credit multiplier is equal to 100 divided by the liquidity ratio, which is 20 in this instance. 100 divided by 20 equals 5. The credit multiplier is equal to 5, which means an increase in deposits of $10,000 will lead to an overall increase in the money supply of $50,000. That $50,000 is equal to $40,000 in newly created credit and a $10,000 increase in reserves as a result of the banking system. A key thing to remember is that we are assuming that banks are lending to their maximum capacity and holding on to only the minimum reserves required. 
Another way to calculate the credit multiplier is to divide the change in the money supply by the change in deposits. Using our previous problem, the money supply increased by $50,000 and the change in deposits was $10,000. Working backwards, we can see that $50,000 divided by $10,000 equals 5. Practice this question to see if you get it. Pause the video here and I'll review the solution in a few seconds. Suppose a customer makes an initial deposit of $100,000 at their local bank. Given a 10% liquidity ratio, determine the following. Well, the credit multiplier is equal to $100 divided by 10, which is equal to 10. The overall increase in the money supply is equal to $100,000 times 10, which equals $1 million. And the total increase in deposits equals $1 million minus 10% of that same figure which is equal to now $900,000 after we've subtracted the 10% away from the 1 million. By now, you should have a better understanding of the credit creation process. If any of these points above are still unclear to you, review the video again and post any questions you have in the comments. If you think you can answer someone's question, give it a try and I'll make sure to give a heart to the answer if it's correct. That's us done for now and I will see you in the next one.